All right, good afternoon, ladies and gents. It is 16.3 time. Um, so today was all about writing equations. I mean, it really was uh, writing the equations, being ready to actually solve them. There was some solving in involved, but honestly, guys, it's about setting it up, choosing the right variables, and then being able to model the situation. So let's see how we are doing. Uh, so let's look at number one. The sum of two numbers is 186. The difference between the same numbers is 32. What are the two numbers? Man, this is a loaded question because you have to know a lot about this um, about systems and how to write equations to even kind of engage this. Um, so this part is important. What are the two numbers? Because what this part tells you is uh, how to set up your variables. I'm looking for two numbers. Now it doesn't ask me what kind of numbers they are. It doesn't give me kind of any indication of what kind of variables I should be using. It's like a logical choice. So I'm going to choose anything I want. So I'm going to choose x um, is number one. I'm going to say y is going to be the second number. So write two equations that model the problem. Well, what I'm looking for now are going to be some constraints. Well, the sum of two numbers is 186. Right? Um, so that's going to be one of my equations, 186, the sum of the numbers. And then the difference in the numbers is going to be 32. So that's going to be my other constraint. That's the other thing I'm trying to hit. Well, this one says if I add them, I should get 186. If I subtract them, I get 32. So if I add them, x plus y, I get 186. If I subtract it, x minus y is going to be 32. And that's all there is to it. So if you kind of think about the steps here, um, we got to pick out the variables, which means we have to know what we're looking for. Then I have to find these constraints, these conditions, these rules i got to follow, and that's going to be write my equations. The school auditorium seats 310 people. Well, you know what? I'm going to write over here. That's going to be one of my constraints. Uh, for a particular performance, the number of seats reserved for students is 25 more than the twice the amount reserved for adults. Okay? How many seats are reserved for students? How many seats are reserved for adults? Well, that tells me my two variables. S is going to be, oh, excuse me, let me go back. I don't want to use S. Let's say, let A be adult seats. And let S be student seats. Okay. So the first one, 310, um, that's going to be a pretty straightforward calculation. If I just take the number of adults I have plus the number of students I have, the seats, that should be 310. The second one is not so simple. Let's kind of delve into this using a strategy we had today, which is just to pick out uh, numbers. For seats reserved for students, uh, the number of seats reserved for students is 25 more than twice the amount reserved for adults. Wow, that's crazy. But let's see if we can figure this out. If I just have one adult seat, how many student seats are there going to be? Well, this is a very complex kind of compl calculation. First, I need to double it. So I need to take 1 times 2. And then I need 25 more seats. And that's going to give me, well, in this case, it's going to be um, 27 student seats. Um, because you're looking at the calculation, you want 25 more than double the amount of adu adult seats. So that was my adult seats, double it at 25. Let's, let's look at a couple more. So do it, two adult seats. Well, I'm going to take two. I'll double it times two and add 25 to that result. So I have 25 more then double the amount of adult seats, so I'm looking at 29 student seats, which isn't really important. What is important is that we're seeing this pattern. If I have three adult seats, if I have four adult seats, okay, um, if I have five adult seats, if I have six adult seats. So I'm doing this ad nauseum because I want you to be able to see this pattern emerge very naturally. So if these right here represent the adult seats, I'll replace that with a variable. In this case, let's say A. It looks like I'll always multiply times two and then add 25. So if that's always going to get me my student seats, I'm going to be looking at student seats being A times two plus 25, which when we clean it up a little bit, um, we'll say that S is equal to uh, 2a plus 25. Okay. So not your typical kind of constraining problem, but one that you can still kind of develop um, if you're looking at patterns. And patterns are really all what well, math is all about. Let's take a look at these two guys. Alright, let's do some more. Um, so this is a tricky one. 
because this is not anywhere close to what we have been doing before. Because I'll tell you what, when you're reading this, investment A starts at $1,000 and increases its value by 80 each week. Investment B starts with 2000 loses 50% of its value each week. You're going to think that the variables are going to be A and B, but that's not actually what's being tracked. Um, read this question. After how many weeks will the investments have the same value? Those are the things we don't know. We don't know weeks. We don't know value. Those are a variable. So I'll, I'm going to let W be number of weeks. And I'm let V be number, uh, I'm sorry, be the value. Let me just erase that. So B is going to be V, B, value. In other words, how much they're worth. So, so this is less like looking at constraints than it is recognizing how the information is grouped. Let me explain what I mean. So invest, investment A starts with, uh, with 1,000 and increases 80 per week. Investment B starts with 2000 and loses $50 of its value each week. So these are giving me a starting point and a value that's increasing or decreasing at a time. But using gents, the equation we're looking for is going to be a y equals mx plus b equation, actually, for both of them. Um, so like for company A, here's what we're looking at. Uh, the value, v, is going to be equal to $80 of gains per week plus $1,000 that it started with. For b, the value is going to be... Uh, losing fifty dollars per week oh activities bus time fifty dollars per week is going to lose it hence the negative uh plus the two thousand dollars it started with so it's not your typical constraint kind of equation um it's something a little bit different we gotta have to be really flexible guys that's what math is all about flexibility let's take a look at this the last one joseph and patrick purchase school supplies in the school bookstore joseph purchases four notebooks and three pens for 1065 patrick purchases three notebooks and five pens for 950 what is the price of a notebook a pen so here it is price of a notebook and a pen there's our variables so let uh, let's let p be price a pen and let's go ahead and let n be price a notebook okay so p be price of pen n be price of notebook um so now in writing our equations, let's go back and let's look at what we actually have. Joseph purchases four notebooks and three pens for 1065. Patrick purchases three notebooks and five pens for 950. So we we have constraints here. We have the 1065 that one person was charged, and we have the 950 that the other person was charged. Now this is unusual because the constraints aren't going to be just like boom plus boom equals 1065. This is all price, so we have to involve price, and price we don't actually know. But we do know that this guy purchased four notebooks and three pens. Well, to get the price of a notebook, I'll multiply the number of notebooks I have, four, uh, times the price of notebook, which I don't know, n, and add it to the number of pens I bought, three, times the price per pen p same thing for 950 this guy bought three notebooks and five pens so that'll be three notebooks plus five pens and we'll totally 950 so again this very dynamic equation writing going on here guys you can't lock yourself into writing it only one way that's just the way it is man you got to be very very dynamic and thinking on your feet the amusement park offers two options option one involves a ten dollar admission fee plus uh five or excuse me uh let me start over. An amusement park offers two options. Option one involves a $10 admission fee plus 50 cents per ride. In option two involves a $6 admission fee plus 75 per ride. We're talking money. That's going to be a big hint how we're going to do this. How many rides? How many rides? Do the two options have the same cost? Cost is the other thing. Those are two variables. So I'm going to let C be cost. And I'm going to let um, R be number of rides. Now, if you're wondering how I'm getting these variables so quickly, I'm looking for the question they're asking us. So the, the things you don't know are going to be in the form of a question. When you find the thing it asks us, that's how we have the thing, uh, the thing we need. So let's talk about costs. Well, how do I look at these two costs? Well, I'm looking at two options. So if I'm looking at option one, and I'm considering the cost. Um, the cost is going to be a $10 fee plus 50 cents per ride. That's like a starting point and an inter and a slope again. So 50 cents per every ride R plus a $10. Whoa, city's bus time again. So cost is going to be 50 cents to ride plus $10. And look at this one. Option two is a $6 admission free fee plus 75 per ride. So the cost is going to be a 75 cent per ride option 
plus a six dollar fee okay so looking at y equals mx plus b again be on the lookout get in your head these things that kind of key you on what kind of equation you're looking for oh the height of a triangle is four inches shorter than its base the area of a triangle is 196 square inches find the dimensions find the dimensions of the triangle now the dimensions are a little is a little ambiguous but dimensions mean how you measure it in this case it's going to be looking for the height and then its base Okay, or length. So that's how I'm going to choose my two variables. So we're going to let B be base. Or length of base. And we're going to let uh, H be height of triangle. Okay. So let's get these two in. Now we do have a constraint here. The area of the triangle is 198 square inches. So something is calculated to 198. Let's get that one first. Now this is going to be the area of a triangle. Now what you have to know about the area of a triangle is that it's one half base times height. So that's all we're looking for. So the, the formula we're looking for is one half times B times H. Now you wouldn't know that unless you knew it. So if you didn't know it, write it down because that's the answer to this first one. Um, so area is 198. So now the second one is a little bit more interesting. Uh, the height of a triangle is 4 inches shorter than its base. So think about this. Um, if its base is 15, that means its height is 4 less than that. That would be 11. Now thinking about how you calculate 11 is more interesting though. Uh, I literally took 15 minus 4. Okay? Minus 4. Uh, what if the height or the base was 20? Well, I take 20 minus 4 to get the height if it was 30. I take 30 minus 4. Now look what's changing, what's staying the same. That tells me if that if I want the height, I have to take whatever the base is and subtract 4. So that's my second equation. So again, again, a lot of practice. You're going to have to take a lot of practice on this, guys. It's the only way to actually get any better.